Okay, welcome. I am continuing our series on the five keys to building a million dollar portfolio. Just a quick review. The key one or secret one was to create leverage, to leverage yourself through others and to leverage your time, your talents, your treasure, your contacts, anything that you can do to leverage others to help you gain that traction and those results you need to grow your ISO. The second key, we talked about a brief recap on lead generation and how important it is to develop a consistent lead generation strategy utilizing two or three different methods so you're not beholding or having your entire business relying on one lead generation strategy. So leads, 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 leads are very, very important. I gave you a couple great resources on where you can find leads and gave you some ideas on how you can generate leads. So that brings us to key three. Here's what I have noticed over the years for the guys in the groups and the ladies that have generated large, consistent, performing, residual portfolios. They are service oriented. So they are delivering a wow experience to their merchants. So they're more concerned about what they can do for their merchant rather than what they can do to their merchants. So it's really a long-term view and looking at what's the lifetime value of your customer? What's the lifetime value of this merchant relationship that you are creating? So you want to deliver a wow experience that sets you apart from your competition and also continue to deliver that experience that experience in a regimented way over the life of the account. It doesn't have to be every month, it could be quarterly, but you want to reach out, touch that merchant, stop by that merchant, call that merchant, keep your name in front of that merchant so when the competition does come, you're at least going to get the courtesy of a phone call so you can try to save that deal and that opportunity. So it's incumbent upon you mainly because you're accountable for your business, you're accountable for your results to stay on top of those merchant relationships and really continue to serve and service them. The other thing is you have to be partnered with a processing partner that provides exceptional customer service. I don't care if you're getting the biggest bonus in the world the highest split in the world, if they're not able to continue to service and support your merchants and keep them on the books, you're not going to really realize or benefit from that high residual split or that bonus because you're going to have to pay it back. So you need to make sure your processing partner is providing exceptional customer service, that they've got your back, that they've got the right tech team in place, that they can deploy, that they're picking up the phones, that they've got a trained staff behind you to help you keep those merchants processing with you. So what I always like to do is I would sit down, and this is an exercise worth doing, and sit down and look at the lifetime value of your merchant relationship. So if you've been in the business, you can look back at your portfolio, you can look back at your average attrition, you can see how long your merchants stay on the books, you can see what your average basis points of income are, what you're making off each merchant, and you can get a real feel for the lifetime value of that account. Look at your bonuses you're receiving if you're on a bonus plan and really see how important that relationship is once you assign a value to it. So it's really, really important that you understand that because then when you have an opportunity to help a merchant, it's not just the merchant you're helping, you see that dollar sign. If that account's worth $3,000 to you, it's much more important and you're willing to go that extra mile to really help that merchant out and support that merchant. So deliver a wow experience. I personally would look twice if you're dealing with an organization, whoever your partners are, and I know most people watching this probably have multiple processing partners, but one, they have substandard customer service and you can't get them on the phone. They don't pick up the phone. When they do pick up the phone, they can't help the merchant or they're constantly transferring them and they're losing them on the transfers and merchants are getting more and more frustrated. They're padding their dues and assessments. A lot of companies don't do this much anymore, but some do. So they're building in additional margin, hiding it, not disclosing it and padding it in those dues and assessments. 
They've got really, really high regulatory or annual fees that they're requiring you to charge your merchants. So if you're getting a big bonus, that's the reason they can pay you the big bonus, right? They've got lots and lots of fees and merchants aren't too happy about fees. So if you're in the mindset of you don't mind charging them a lot of fees and you think they're going to stay on the books with you, then by all means, go ahead and do that. But I will tell you over the long run, it's going to be much more valuable and profitable for you to charge fair fees. I'm not saying no fees, but fair fees. If they've got egregious PCI non-compliance fees, that's another thing I would look at. We've seen it lately. We've seen a lot of uh, comments on the board, uh, processors are charging a lot of very, very high PCI, non, PCI non-compliance fees. Those are paying for those big mergers they did, those big acquisitions they did, and they're just assuming, hey, we'll get 5 or 7% attrition rate of our merchants, but we're going to make a lot of money from the other merchants that don't even see it on their statement. So I would personally look at that, and that would be something I would consider when I'm looking at a processing partner. If they're constantly raising and increasing their rates, uh, certainly we know two times a year Visa MasterCard come out with interchange updates. Hey, no problem. Pass those through. Maybe even uh, add some profit in there. But if they're consistently approving merchants and raising their rates three months down the road or uh, really raising them way past interchange, I would look at that as well because you're going to get complaints uh, you might your merchant might ride it for a while, but when your competition comes in the door the next time, they're going to certainly point it out to your merchant. And if they've got really really high penal, penalty cancellation fees, uh, I have no problem with the cancellation fee. I certainly would like to be a partner that would allow you to waive that fee if you needed to, or not charge a cancellation fee. But if they got really really egregious cancellation fees and they hold the line on those. I would certainly review that as well. So those are some things I would look at when you're picking out or choosing to work with a partner because these practices really mean more attrition for you. And if you're in a bonus program, which most of you probably are, you typically have a 12-month window on a buyback on a bonus. And I've seen this a lot is you've got these ISOs that are paying these big bonuses but they're not supporting the merchants and they're doing a lot of these high rates and fees. That merchant cancels in six months, four months, seven months, eight months, and all of a sudden you're faced with the buyback and you're not going to have the lifetime value of the account, plus you've got to buy back the account. So it's a never-ending cycle that you can get trapped into. So you've got to really weigh uh, the bonus plans, weigh the residual plans, and maybe split your business between a couple people so you know that you've got a really consistent, high-performing portfolio that has some value to it. So the way your partner treats their merchant is most likely the way they're going to treat you. So you need to make sure you're with that right partner and you're comfortable with how your partner is supporting you. So what do happy merchants mean? What Well, They mean a lot of things, right? They mean a lot more money for you, of course. They mean a lot less complaints. So you know you've got your partner behind you that's got your back. You're supporting your merchants and giving them that wow experience. You're going by and doing business with them and eating at the restaurant, bringing them free paper, helping them with their stickers, replacing their equipment if it breaks, doing all those little things that exceptional, extraordinary salespeople do. And what's going to happen from that? You're going to get more referrals, right? You're going to get people in the local business market. It's estimated that every business owner knows around 250 other people. So you want to ask for those referrals and you want to get those referrals. And when they're happy, you don't feel bad about asking for them, right? It's also going to mean less attrition in your portfolio. And this is very, very important because attrition is a big deal. Most of the businesses out there, all of us are just Rechurning and recycling merchants or rewriting merchants and the margins are going lower and lower uh, until cash discounting came along. So that, that was a little breath of fresh air for a lot of us. But if a merchant's not happy, they're going to attrit. And if they're priced too high, they're going to attrit eventually. So you've got to make sure that your merchants are happy so you don't lose the value in that portfolio, especially if you have an exit strategy somewhere down the road where you want to sell that portfolio, borrow against it, or retire, say. 
and it also gives you a better night's sleep. You know, I, I hate uh, when I had merchants that weren't happy or I had merchants that had issues or maybe uh, my processor I had uh, years and years ago. They don't do it too much these days, but we had a lot of a lot of issues with processors that would all of a sudden come up with a hundred dollar a year annual fee or something out of the blue, and all of a sudden I had you know dozens and dozens of merchants calling in asking me why did I put in with them? Why did they raise that fee? Uh, why didn't I tell them about it? And I'd have to say, hey, I didn't know anything about it. They just they just decided to do it. So you know when you're with a good partner, you get a better night's sleep. You know your merchants are happy. You know you're taking care of them. And, and you know you're treating them fairly just the way that you would want to be treated too. So you can't put a price tag on exceptional service and support. And remember, we want to build those relationships so we can get those referrals. So that's my take on creating that wow experience. There's a lot of different tactics that you, you can go about it. Uh, we'll talk about that in additional trainings. But Really be committed to that. Look at how you're servicing your merchants because the value of that merchant, I promise you, is much more than you think if you haven't done that exercise and figured out what that lifetime value is. So that is key three. We will talk to you next week and we'll get out key four and key five here as we wrap up this training. Have a great day.